Hey guys, welcome to the next video. This is a makeup artist grooming, proper grooming, personal etiquette, personal grooming, and just a makeup artist dress code. This is so important because this is you. You are selling what you look like. That's what I usually uh, believe. So to start with, um, what do makeup artists wear? I know the glam squad, the glam team, we love to, you know, to look good. So black, we always wear black. And I know most of you think maybe black is just this cool color. But yes, and you're not wrong. Black is such a cool color and we love to wear black as, um, you know, the glam squad because we really need to not be on the spotlight. We want the person we are working on to just take the center stage and just, you know, make them they are the stars of the show so we want them we want us to disappear a little bit and so that they can just take the center stage that's one of the reasons why we wear black and this is like in general terms uh, but more specifically in film we wear black because if you wear like too many bright colors and you're doing makeup and you're lit you know your makeup setup is lit the light that hits you will you know hit your 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 clothes maybe if you're wearing a very reflective bright colored top will reflect on the face you're working on now this is so important because the reflection or just the the, the light that hits uh, this person that you're working on will have a huge impact as to what your makeup looks like so you might end up applying so much color because this person looks darker you might end up using uh, doing very little color because this person uh, looks like they're not properly made up. Some colors will appear uh, differently than they would in natural light. So even though you have your properly lit um, makeup setup, the colors that you apply on the face will be affected by what you're wearing. So that's one of the reasons why we wear black, especially in film. Um, and also, just when you're going to do your touch-up or corrections on set, you just don't want to be that makeup artist who's in bright colors just crossing the set, you know, you know, and, um, you know, crossing the camera and just going to correct, correct uh, your makeup. So you just want to recede a bit. You want, you want to just not be so underdressed and not so overdressed at the same time. It's just a subtle, nice uh, combination of, you know, black, um, that will also make you look so cool and professional as a makeup artist. So that's one of the reasons why we wear black. Um, so if I jump to, I want to jump on to like, uh, you know, just personal grooming, which is so important. Now, makeup artists, you are in less than 30 centimeters uh, from your, <laughs> the person you're doing makeup on. Remember, so you're, you're in their private space, you're in their personal space. So you need to look good, smell good, and just have the right kind of attitude and will come to personal etiquette. Um, so, but we are still on personal grooming. So if you're in within, you know, that personal space, you need to just have good breath. So always just carry gum with you or just something just that just gives you a, a good breath. Um, this is so important. We are always just doing makeup very early in the morning. Um, you know, you just woke up, your client just woke up and you're doing your bridal uh, makeup, you're doing your film makeup. This person can get grumpy uh, just out of just you having a bad breath. So, um, you know, or just, you know, um, just that aspect of personal grooming, you're, you're, you don't have, um, you're smelling of sweat, man. You, like, you need to be really, really clean. Uh, when you're doing your makeup. Remember, you are selling what you look like. So if you're smelling good, looking good, the client will trust that you can do a good job. So always also remember just to do, you know, just some good moisturizer. You don't have to go do like the whole um, makeup look on your face, but you can just do, you know, just a very small, um, very good, um, you know, natural look uh, for the ladies and you, for the guys, you can just, you know, groom your face, man. Like just brush the beard and, you know, just do some good moisturizer and you're good. They will trust you, the client will trust you if the, you look the part uh, from your face, from the clothes you wear, from how you smell. It is so, so important. Also, remember your nails, guys. 
you are touching someone's face, you are touching the products, you are using your hands sometimes to just, you know, make small corrections on someone's face, you are using your hands. Now, it's important uh, also to mention, like with the COVID season um, that we are in, always sanitize, sanitize your, your, your makeup. Just make sure that the client sees that you've sanitized your hands before you touch them. It is super important uh, because that buys, your, your, buys you some trust. They trust that you're now safe to touch their face with your hands. It is very, very important. So sanitize your hands. Uh, just put on some black uh, clothes. For filmmakers, you'll have to finish that look with some good sneakers because you'll be running around and standing most of the time. So very comfortable shoes. It's very, very important to wear comfortable shoes. A makeup artist is just standing the whole time. You, you know, we usually take 45 minutes or more per face. So imagine you're working on two, three, four, five, six clients you'll need to wear the most comfortable shoes you can get um, for you, for your own good. You're standing, you're doing the makeup standing, so it's very, very important. Wear comfortable shoes. So now, you have some good skincare. You have some good black outfit. You do not have too much jewelry on you, right? Uh, you have clean nails, you've sanitized your hands, you have good breath, you're, you know, something else. Um, the, the cologne that you wear, it's very important to just do like something very mild. If you need to do like a cologne, just do something very mild because this will not be so irritating to your client, to the person you're doing makeup on. Remember, you're just 30 centimeters away from them. You're in their personal space. So you need to be very aware that in this space, they need, they need you to be as present as possible um, to allow them so that they can allow you to do your makeup. Um, so do a very mild cologne if you have to. If you if you if you you're not into colognes, a Dio would be nice. You know, a good roll-on here or there. You know, some good moisturized uh, hands. It's also good. You're not going to do uh, your makeup with you know your ashy hands, so it's very important. Um, yeah. So now from there, the next part would be personal etiquette. You're looking the part. You're wearing your black. You're very moisturized, you're looking the part, you're looking nice, you're smelling nice. Now, how do you talk to the client? How do you approach the client? This is personal etiquette. This is really, really important because most of us lose out on very important jobs because the client thinks, thought, this guy has an attitude, this lady has an attitude, this guy I think is a snob, this guy looks like, um, you know, behaves like this, just because of how we communicate. So. We might even be like relaying some negative information, but how we relay the information is really important. It makes a big impact on how people receive the information. So how you communicate to your client, especially in the morning, you know, remember, like if you're working on an actor, you're in TV or film, um, <coughs> that's the, f the place where the actor becomes, um, turns into the character, right? So they need to be as comfortable as possible. I can't even stress this enough. The person you're doing makeup on needs to be as comfortable as possible. You need to make them comfortable by how you relay information to them. You know, you might use words like, excuse me, I just need to do your makeup. Or like, might there be anything I could help you with? You might even offer them gum if you have gum. Uh, you might, you know, uh, just take them through the kind of makeup routine you, you um, the kind of makeup you're going to do. You can even ask them about, you know, what do you do you use a moisturizer? What moisturizer do you use? Um, and they tell you this product, and then you say, okay, so I have this and this and this. Uh, do you think it's okay if I use this moisturizer uh, on you as opposed to what you usually wear? What foundation do you wear? Um, what 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 might be your favorite lip color? So that you get to understand this person. So this is really important because you're creating a rapport with the person you're doing makeup on. And they feel like they can trust you. This is so important. They feel like they can trust you and they, they allow you to do your makeup. So this is all about, you know, personal etiquette. You know, when, you're, you, know, when you want to do something, when, you know, usually when I'm doing makeup on someone and they have come with their makeup, I usually tell them, when they come with their makeup on, I usually tell them, um, 
So, um, you know, your makeup is not bad. I would like to take off the makeup so that I can do a fresh look. Um, but it, you, will, you will still like it. You will still love the look I'll do to you. And I usually make uh, my clients feel like it's a collaborative thing we are doing. We are working together to create this look. That's why I ask them, you know, what's your favorite lip color? Uh, and this also, um, you know, saves you on time because you do not have to figure out, oh, the dark colors work for this person. The, you know, the bright colors uh, make someone look better. Um, so this client will save you on time because they, they, they'll be like, oh, I think I feel more inclined to, you know, red makes me feel a bit more confident. So if you're in a place where you can consider using the red, you will just go straight to the red. This will not kill your creativity still. It will actually add value to your makeup artistry and to how you deal with your clients, whether they are actors, news anchors, models, um, or anyone, even people in theater. So it's really, really important to create that rapport by the language that you use. Please is a very, very normal um, word to use. Thank you is a very, very normal word uh, for a makeup artist. You should get used to using it. Um, kindly is, is a very, very important word to use. So use all these kind words just to make sure that someone uh, trusts you, um, just to make someone um, understand that you know, you're here to make them look the best uh, they can ever look. So you're doing a collaborative effort with them, a collaborative project with them to create a look that you'll be happy about, that they'll be happy about. So personal etiquette, personal grooming, you know, personal image, you know, the makeup artist dress code. This is really, really important. We, as makeup artists, we are the, past, we are the people who meet um, our actors and our brides like the earliest, early in the morning. So we need to be as pleasant as we can, as pleasant as we possibly can, so that, um, you know, these people, are, we are supporting these people to just achieve their vision. So if you spoil someone's... Um, day in the morning by you know just not having the best cologne or just not having a you know the best breath or you know or not having the best attitude or the best language then you will have done so much damage to the entire project and you know you might lose out on work uh, much later without knowing it um, so it's really really important i usually think we as makeup artists we are mostly even uh, therapists at some point. This is where people uh, share, the makeup artist chair is really um, an interesting chair. People find, um, find it so comfortable when they're seated on the chair, they feel like, I can trust this person. Just how, just about how, you know, just by how you've made the environment feel so comfortable. So they are able to vent, they are able to uh, tell you things. Uh, they are able to trust you, not to say that if they tell you their secrets, you'll, be, you'll just go out telling on them. But you, you've created an environment where they can share, they can speak. Early in the morning, they're just talking and talking and talking. And this is so important, you should be a listening ear. This is so important. Please, always engage when you're engaged. Always engage when you're engaged. Do not like over-engage. Do not um, uh, be just the person talking all the time. Uh, you know, remember, we are not taking the center stage here. We are not telling, you know, the person we are doing makeup on, you know, all kinds of things. They are trying to get into character. So it's, there are some artists or like actors who like just keeping quiet and closing their eyes and getting their makeup done. There are other people who like speaking and engaging and talking uh, about personal stuff. There are other people who like to um, crack jokes, have fun, and it's, they usually have a blast. So make sure that you have um, been able to identify the client, you, the person you're doing makeup on, just by the few minutes you've engaged them, when, how they behave when they sit on the chair, so that will determine how you engage them. So when they sit on the chair, you'll know this person, oh, this is a talkative one, so I have to talk with them. This is, um, 
someone who just really needs to share something that is bugging them. You have to listen, not over engage. This is the person who just likes to crack jokes. Then you crack jokes. I usually put some music uh, when I'm doing my makeup, always, because I usually just don't like doing makeup when it's dead silent. So, you know, also just putting some music and, you know, your whole setup just looking very nice and smelling nice, you know, it, it really adds some value. You create that almost like a spa environment to the actor and without knowing it, um, they're able to trust you. They're very comfortable. They are, you know, they don't find you a nuisance. So do not over-engage uh, your client. Maybe they're going through their lines. They are getting to their character. Remember, in film, TV, uh, theater, this is where the actor, the, the person becomes the actor. This is where the actor becomes the character. It's really, really important to give them their space. If you find them, they've gone, if you find it like, if you feel like they've gone to a space where they're just silent, please just keep your cool, just be silent, let them do their thing, and only engage when you're engaged, and make sure that you do. And they, this also gives you an amazing opportunity when someone is just relaxed. You get to do your makeup really well, you get to make mistakes and correct them without, you know, any pressure. And by the music, you just create an environment where someone is just relaxed and looking forward to seeing the outcome of what you're doing. So just to sum it up, personal etiquette, really important. Personal grooming. Yo, how you show up is how they, they trust how you look. It is really important. The, you will never sell as a makeup artist. You cannot sell what you do not look like. You can only sell what you look like. So personal grooming, very important. Do not forget, just try your best to love the color black because you will be wearing black. Most of the time you'll be required, you know, uh, to wear black most of the time. And it is really, really important and necessary for you to wear black. Um, and comfortable shoes, do not forget, comfortable shoes. Cheers.